Good morning. Oh, I almost wish I didn't even have to do videos like I'm going to do today. <laughs> I've been sitting here for a good while and awake for a couple of hours already this morning. I'm still not used to this time change thing. I'm still on the old daylight savings time. And so I went to bed earlier last night, but woke up much earlier this morning because I still only get my four to five hours of sleep a night. It's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, releasing the old paradigm, 10th wave, releasing the old paradigm. That's the title. And my little blurb that I wrote a half hour ago. In recent weeks, there has been a good deal of controversy in regard to old and new paradigm thinking. Yesterday, Michael Erickson, you've heard me mention him before, wrote, There is a war, Ron. It's the war between what is true and what appears true. If you are not fighting this war, you will very likely believe a lie. And again, the idea that we are one with God is the propaganda. End quote. This is old paradigm thinking. And as I see it, responsible for the world we have created. I cannot make anyone see anything. However, I do invite as many as can to release this old paradigm thinking and envision a world of peace rather than a world at war. I find it interesting that he said it's the war between what is true and what appears true. From my perspective, Michael, when I read that sentence that you wrote, you're the one that believes what appears true to be true. And you don't believe what is true by your statement, the idea that we are one with God is, pro is the propaganda. You don't believe in monothe. You're not a monotheist. You're stuck in dualism. You're stuck in the old paradigm of war and a constant battle between light and dark, good and evil. Because that's what you perceive reality to be. You perceive it to be a constant conflict. That conflict, from your perspective, was, re was settled when Jesus died on the cross. And if we accept that death as the atonement and accept that somebody else could do something for us to make us whole, If we accept that, then we're whole. But if we don't accept that, then we're not whole. But you don't see wholeness. Wholeness has an essence of its own. It is what it is. Now, I can't convince you, but yet you keep trying to convince me that the way that you see it is right. But yet I look at your words as you look at some of mine. And because we're viewing it from our own perspective, each of us, we see the exact opposite. I used to believe as you now do, and you claim you used to believe as I now do. And we've each moved to another paradigm or another vantage point, and we think that our vantage point is correct. The whole world plays this game, by the way. Everybody plays the game if they think at all. Now, granted, I don't think a lot of people think or at least it doesn't appear that they do. But that's appearances. And I don't know the heart of the matter. We know from the Bible, Michael, we can agree that God looks on the heart, not at outward appearances. God sees the essence of what is. And I can't, it's hard for me to comprehend that that there are still people like you and many others that can't understand that God is love and love doesn't separate. Love doesn't separate, period. It doesn't. It can't. God is impartial. That means not partial to anything. That's one meaning. 
But it also means, listen to me, that God is not a part, just simply a part of something. God is the whole of everything. That has to be the reality. It's the only logical reality from my vantage point. But I recognize, oh, do I recognize, that most of the world is still caught in the old paradigm of us versus them, good versus evil, light versus dark, God versus the devil. We're caught up in that insane paradigm. And because we're caught in it, we are conflicted within our own consciousness, our own awareness, our own being, when we don't touch the essence of our being, the eternal part of ourselves, when we only deal with the ego and the body and the present expression of our self, it looks like, it looks like that's the way it is. It's what appears to be true. See, you, you hit it right on the head with your sentence. You hit it right on the head. It appears to be true. But it's not what is true. What is true is that the Creator is everywhere present, is omniscient, is omnipotent. The Creator is in everything because nothing can be separate from the Creator. And we can go only as far as the Bible. If I make my bed in hell, you are there, the psalmist wrote. I get it. Why can't others get it? I cannot be separated from God. The idea that we are one with God is propaganda. It may appear to be propaganda based on appearances, Michael, but it's not propaganda. It's the reality of God being God. It's crazy that so many have labeled New Age as something that's connected to Lucifer. <laughs> and they take, the, they take Lucifer, if the name Lucifer is attached to anything, it automatically has to be disregarded. Alice Bailey and the Theosophy are disregarded as Luciferian. The Illuminati is disregarded as Luciferian. And I can understand why based on appearances and what roles they play. But bear in mind, everything plays a role in our bodies. Look at our own bodies. Not everything is the kidney or the heart or the lung or the brain or the pancreas or the bone or the muscle or the eye or the ear or the mouth, the tongue. I can name all the organs. Doesn't matter. Each one has a role to play. And if every part of our body played the same role, the body would be a mess, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be a body. There would be no synergy. There would be no expression, as we've come to understand expression. And in the kingdom of heaven, it's just exactly like that. There are different roles, but they are all working together in one unity, except that we have created a false thinking, a false paradigm that they have to be, that the light has to battle the darkness instead of just sharing a contrast. There is only light and the light turned off. There is only knowledge and the knowledge turned off, which is ignorance. That's all there is. Can there be something else? I mean, the idea of unity to me is a given. I can't not see from that perspective. I can't not see from that. And I don't understand how I ever fell for the lie that there was a war going on. Because in me, the only war going on that I can see is the war of trying to help other people see the love of God. When I talked to my aunt the last time, 
who was a lifetime minister. She's now, I guess her mind is, I guess she's in the stages of Alzheimer's and she's not too coherent. It's been a couple of years since I talked to her. But actually the last few times that I did talk to her, she always commented to me, Ronnie, all you ever talk about is the love of God. That's all you see is the love of God. And my family thinks I'm satanic. <laughs> and Michael Erickson thinks I'm satanic, that I'm teaching New Age propaganda, that we are all one, that there is one God and one maker of heaven and earth and all that is therein. That Christ is all in all. I see these things, that makes me satanic, that makes me Luciferian, that makes me New Age. I'm not against Lucifer, do you understand? I'm not against Jesus, do you understand? I'm not against, I don't have two gods, I have one God, I'm a monotheist. I believe in the law of one, that everything is one, regardless of appearances. Appearances are the illusion. Appearances teach us separation, but that's the illusion. It's the illusion because we don't see the interconnectedness of everything, because the interconnectedness is on a scale or on a frequency that we don't perceive with our five senses, but we do perceive it with our extrasensory perception. And when we get into that place and we get it in, in, through our heart, through intuition, it all connects. I am part of Michael Erickson and he part of me and each of us part of the other. We are each mirrors expressing a part of ourself that we need to love. That's the only way that we can release the old paradigm is if we're willing to love what is. Michael says, if you are not fighting the war, you will be believing the lie. Michael, if you are fighting the war, you already believe the lie. Do you, can you not see where I'm seeing from? I see where you're seeing from because I really did used to be there. I really did buy that hook, line, and sinker. I was raised in it. It was, it was the truth that I knew to be true, but it wasn't true. It wasn't complete. It was partial. It was only a part of the picture. It was not the big picture. It was the little picture. And I believe the little picture was what was important. And that's where we all are. We believe our present point of view is all there is. I know my present point of view is not all there is. I know there's a lot of things that I don't understand. I don't see. I can't, I can't get my mind around it. And I can't even sometimes get my heart around it. I know that. I know that about myself. But I accept that that's part of the role that I'm playing or part of the drama that I'm going through right now in my life. And it's okay. I'm not at war with it. There's nothing to fix because there's nothing broken. Because I trust that, that the God that created me is good, not evil. I trust that the God who made me in his image, according to scripture, I trust that that God has a higher purpose for me. And I'm willing to empty myself and allow for the possibility that what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing is actually good, even if it appears and feels otherwise. I don't judge by appearances to the best of my ability, because God doesn't. I try to look at the heart. And I believe, Michael, that you have a good heart. I believe that most Christians, most Muslims, most Hindus, most Buddhists, most Illuminati actually do, deep down inside, have a good heart. I believe that. And I don't base it on appearances. I base it on an idea, a paradigm that says God is love and light. 
and God loves everyone, and in him is no darkness at all. And God is masculine and feminine. God and goddess are one, always have been, always will be, can't be any other way, but we've created drama, and that's part of the will of God for the development of wisdom and personal experience. So that God could know God's self through the creation. That's how I see it. It's a new paradigm thinking, but it's as old as the hills. The mystics have always seen it, always seen it. We've always known it to be true. And when I quiet my heart and I get in that quiet sp space within me, I feel it. It can't be any other way. So I've released a lot of the old paradigm thinking. Not all of it yet. I still get trapped in it the same as everybody else. But I believe in the radical grace of God expressed through Christ in the Christian message. But the Christian message is not a religion. And it's bigger than what most Christians comprehend. Call it new age or new thought. Call it whatever you want. Call it Luciferian. I don't care. There's only one God. That's scriptural. And Christ, the representation of God made flesh, which is all of us, not just Jesus, but all of us, that is all and in all. It's what is. I send everyone love, and I thank you for listening. May you be blessed today from your inside out, from your deepest part of your heart. May you be blessed by the love of God. Thank you. Namaste.